Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. No, there's no England now because I can't go there. The day they banned Michael Savage from the United Kingdom is the day England died. Welcome to the program. That's an understatement because now they want to ban Donald Trump. So you could say I'm in good company or I'm in bad company, depending on which side of the aisle you're on. If you're a communist, socialist, Islamist, you hate Donald Trump. If you're a patriot, nationalist, you say, hey, maybe he has something there. Now, let me start at the beginning because we're going to talk about the most controversial statement of the campaign, where Donald Trump said that all Muslims should be banned from the United States. I mean, I have the full speech. You're going to hear it in context, not out of context. That's number one. He didn't say American Muslims should be uh, deported. He said that all Muslims who want to come here as refugees should be banned from America. That's what he said. Let me say this at the outset. I wouldn't have put it that way. I would have put it this way. Close the borders completely for seven years, which is how I put it in government zero. I didn't say ban Muslims. I said ban everyone for seven years. I said we have had unprecedented immigration into this country, not just in terms of numbers, but of foreign and even hostile cultures. We need time to assimilate the immigrants we have, just as we did the waves of immigrants at the beginning of the last century. At the end of seven years, evaluate our capacity for normalizing immigration with nationalist priorities as I've described. That's how I put it. Let me tell you something. Everything is perception in this world. Everything is perception. The enemies are everywhere, and they're not just liberals. As you well know, I'm an independent. I am not a Republican. The Republicans are all liberals in fool's clothing. Every Republican who's attacked Trump is a liberal in fool's clothing. Make no mistake about it. They were waiting for an opportunity to jump down his throat, and jump down their throat, he did. Now, what's happened as a result is that people don't understand what he's saying. He has said he wants the complete shutdown of Muslim immigration into the U.S. The false Tory in England, the fake conservative Cameroon, slams the divisive comments, and the Tories themselves, the so-called conservatives in England, have branded Trump repugnant. Republican front runners said radicalized areas of London are not police because the police are afraid to go in there. Scotland Yard hits back in a rare statement and says Trump could not be more wrong. Labor Party, that's the communist socialist appeasement wing, accuses Trump of trying to divide communities for political gain. They're calling for his being banned from Britain over his, quote, obnoxious, repellent and dangerous claims that police in London fear for their lives because some communities are so radicalized. I thought that was a given. Don't they call it Londonistan? Aren't the police afraid to go in there? Wasn't a British soldier decapitated and dismembered in the street by an African Muslim not a year or two ago in the street, butchered? You don't remember that story? Now, having said that, we have to analyze this very carefully because at the end of the day, everything is perception. Reality is not reality anymore. Reality is what the media makes it into. And so we're going to talk about the reality of what Trump said and what it really means and what it means for our survival. Never forget that they are at war with us. Who do I mean by they? Well, name them. ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Al-Nusra Front, mm, maybe 30 other groups are at war with us. Are they the only ones who hate you? Not by a long shot. If you actually looked into this, your hair would stand up. There's a great article in the National Review by David French, who is a staff writer, an attorney, and a veteran of Operation Iraqi Freedom. He knows what it's all about. And his article, Dispelling the Few Extremist Myth, The Muslim World is Overcome with Hate, is worth reading in its entirety. It's an amazing article. And he says, the Muslim world is overcome with hate. And he goes country by country, nation by nation, nation by nation, and he breaks it down for you. And you will see with your own eyes and come to your own conclusions as to what we are facing. 
the bigotry in the overall Muslim world is overwhelming. You talk about bigotry? What about the bigotry in the Muslim world? What about the steps of escalating radicalism, culminating in jihadist armies that in some instances represent a greater share of the respective population than does the active duty military in the United States? He writes the base of the pyramid. The most broadly held hatred in the Islamic world is anti-Jewish, with staggering numbers of Muslims expressing anti-Jewish views. And yet, if you were to stop a liberal Jew in America today, they would say Donald Trump is the problem. He says the base of the pyramid, the most broadly held hatred in the Islamic world, is anti-Semitism. Well, that's an odd statement. It's really anti-Jewishism, not anti-Semitism. And I'm quoting him now. With staggering numbers of Muslims expressing anti-Jewish views. And uh, you can read it for yourself. My friends, we're in real trouble because we're in real denial. The only question that you have to ask yourself now is, is Trump finished? That's a real question. And someone asked me that this morning, and I'm going to play his speech. I'm going to give you my opinion, but not right now. I'm going to give you my opinion, but it's not as clear cut as you may think. It is not as clear cut as you may think, because his space is one thing. The wider electorate is another, and the election is yet another. Remember that you're talking about a long race. And you're talking about a portion of the race. You're looking at a snapshot of the race. You're not looking at the finish line. I am. Because I am Lynchaeus, the pilot seer of the Argonauts. I can see all. And I see it ahead of everybody in the media. Everyone knows that. And I'll tell you what I think is going to happen. And the prognosis, my friends, is not very good. So before I go into my editorializing any further, which I've already begun, I think it's very important that we go back to the beginning, which is... Trump's statement, and they want to ban him in England. We're going to play his entire two-minute speech, and we're going to look in, in, into detail into what he said and what you think about it. The fact of the matter is, is that if he is banned from England, he will join me, Michael Savage, and we will have to go perhaps to Italy on our next vacation to play. Uh, uh, I, don't, we don't, I don't play golf. He owns golf clubs in Scotland. Does that mean they're going to ban him from Scotland? I don't really know. They may. I mean, the Brits are very famous for shooting themselves in the feet and then begging for America to bail them out. They're only going to have to come to us to bail them out again, by the way, after, after screaming everything that they want. You know, at the end of the day, they're going to come screaming like little girls for America to save them once again like they did in World War II. So let's not pay that much attention to Cam Oron. Cam Oron, when he ran for office in uh, 2010 or 20, I don't remember the year, I had been banned in Britain, shockingly, in 2009. And I was stunned to read it on the Drudge Report. I woke up, I said, what? I can't go to England for something I said? I said, what did I say? Well, I looked it up, and half the things they quoted me as having said, I didn't say. And I was banned by some of the worst people in the history of the world. Labor Party activists, friends of Hillary Clinton, by the way, friends of the entire Clinton machine. I'm pretty sure, by the way, that it was the Clinton machine that sent these, sent these sound bites to England to get me banned. I can't prove it. I spent a fortune trying to get my name off that band list, and I never succeeded. It cost me over $400,000. The lawyers were happy to take my money in England, and I'm still banned from entering the U.K. And by the way, I love the British people. I love the architecture. Uh, and I'm really sad that I couldn't go there to get my teeth done with their famous dentistry from the uh, National Health Service. And, of course, the great British cuisine is something I greatly miss. It's not Italian food I love. I always seek out Scottish cuisine in McDonald's. But nevertheless, let's move it along here and go back to the basics. It's a very serious issue. You know, was Donald Trump serious when he said it? Did he do it for effect? Did he do it for his base? Does he really mean it? Only he can tell you that, and he's not on the program today. I'll give you a little fact, though, that you may not know. Right now in Britain, more Muslims join ISIS than join the British Army. In Britain right now, more Muslims join ISIS than join the British Army. 855-400-7282. Now, for all of the detractors of Trump, I find some of their statements amazingly stupid. I can't understand how they say it's unconstitutional, what he's saying, since he's not talking about American citizens. Since when does our Constitution apply to people who are not even citizens? I don't understand where that came from. 
Should we just eliminate the Constitution and uh, do as Obama does and say we're all citizens of the world? We are not all citizens of the world. We are unique. We are different. This is a different nation. We're not the same as Cameroon. And yet, it didn't stop the uh, conservatives from attacking him. And I think we should play that now uh, right off the bat. Wait until you hear what your favorite candidates, hold on, said about Donald Trump. Paul Ryan, Chris Christie, Carly Fiorina, and the other um, liberals in wolves' clothing. Listen to the Savage Nation, clip one. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. Paul Ryan. This is not conservatism. What was proposed yesterday is not what this party stands for. And more importantly, it's not what this country stands for. Governor of New Jersey, Chris Christie. This is the kind of thing that people say when they have no experience and don't know what they're talking about. Um, we do not need to resort to that type of activity, nor should we. Carly Fiorina. That overreaction is as dangerous as Barack Obama's underreaction. We're now going to violate the constitutional rights of citizens because of Donald Trump? I don't think so. Jay Johnson. Irresponsible, probably illegal, unconstitutional, and contrary to international law. Un-American. Republican Congressman Mike Turner. Well, not only is it deplorable, it absolutely shows that Donald Trump is not qualified to be president of the United States or hold any elective office. Senator Lindsey Graham. And you know how you make America great again? Tell Donald Trump to go to hell. Our country cannot be the victim of horrendous attacks by people that believe only in jihad. My friends, fellow Americans and countrymen, they are at war with us. When I say they, we know who they are. We certainly know ISIS is at war with us. We know that uh, Al-Qaeda has been at war with us. Just take a look at the cemeteries. We know that there are many other Muslim front groups that are at war with us. And one candidate says, wait a minute, hold it now. We better think about this from a different perspective. And what happens? Well, you heard what happened. When I come back, we'll talk about the myth of Donald Trump, the lies about Donald Trump, and then eventually I will tell you what I think this means with regard to the long race to the White House right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800 B U I C O I. We're going to play the entire two-minute uh, Trump speech on uh, the Muslim issue. And we're going to talk about that because now they're saying that he should be banned in Britain. The same uh, reactionary liberal forces in England that banned Michael Savage. And I, I'll tell you, I say it with not the, a degree of happiness. I'm not wearing it as a badge of courage. I wish that it didn't happen. But no one in America, with very rare exceptions, stood up for me when I was banned. In fact, some in radio who pose as conservatives ripped me apart, said that they did the right thing. But you wouldn't know any of that. Do you know who came to my side when it happened? Megyn Kelly. That's right. On Fox News, she did two segments on it. Do you know Bill O'Reilly said that they shouldn't have banned me? I bet you didn't know that. I never forget a friend, ever. Nor do I ever forget an enemy. But the thing is, they did. They were amongst the few. Laura Ingram did. A few others. They were it. Other than that, no one said a word. And every poll in England said that I shouldn't have been banned. Even liberals in England said it was outrageous for them to have banned me from entering England. Even liberals said that. Even Muslims said it was crazy to ban me. Do you know that? I have all the quotes. I, I did a book on this years ago, Banned in Britain. But it's an old story. The only reason I'm bringing it up is because I was banned in Britain, and now they want to ban Donald Trump for saying one word about Islam. One word. One word in the liberal fascists go insane, goose-stepping against anybody who dares stand up uh, to them. It's not really about Muslims, by the way. It's about Donald Trump and his threat to the established order. That's all it is. They're using Muslims as an excuse to take down the only anti-establishment candidate that there is. They're terrified that the gravy train will come to an end. It's all about money. Why do you think these Republican stooges are against Donald Trump? Because it's a money train. They don't want a guy like him winning the presidency because he's liable to appoint really smart people to run everything who are not corrupt and don't